Thanks so much for joining us today as we discuss ways that you can delegate and empower your team as a leader. Let's consider some of the things that a leader is asked to do. You're often expected to make sure that a long list of things are accomplished. You're probably also asked to be in charge of a group of people and then figure out how to make those people do those things. But all of this is without any instruction about how to do any of it. So we're gonna cover some of that today and help you consider some new skills and methods you can use to be an effective leader. Take a minute and reflect on your experiences. What do you currently know about delegation? And what does that term delegate make you think of or picture? What about the term empower? Probably some slightly different ideas. And what kind of experiences, positive or negative, have you had with delegation? Some common answers, just to reflect a bit. Sometimes you think about delegation as being given a simple to-do list, even maybe micromanaging things or pushing work off onto another person. When you consider the term empower, in contrast to delegation, it can think about being accomplished and helping people feel proud of themselves. Those experiences can include things like being trusted or not being trusted by a leader. And even if you are the leader asking someone to complete a task and they just don't do it. We know as leaders that you're expected to delegate, um, but why don't we do it more often? You might have found some answers in those last questions, but some other common reasons. It takes a lot of creativity to figure out how the heck to do that. Sometimes you also want to provide approval at every step along the way, or someone else wants to get your approval at every step along the way. It's also difficult because if they do something wrong and you're the leader, you're still going to have to get blamed for that. And it's hard to know that you'll be responsible, even if you weren't in charge of doing it. Sometimes, and this requires some real honesty with yourself, it also comes from a lack of self-confidence because we can fear looking weak, unqualified, or indecisive if we're asking other people to take on tasks. And sometimes we're just plain not comfortable giving up control. A lot of us can relate to the feeling that if I do it, I know that it's done the way I want it done. And I know it's done right. And if I ask someone else, I don't know for sure that it's going to be done the way I want. So instead of just thinking about delegating, let's think about empowering our teams and building up a little bit higher. So that also adds us to think about what's that difference between delegation and empowerment. You might have reflected on this a little bit before, but let's build on that. Delegation at its core is about giving out tasks and making sure they get done. It is sort of a value neutral concept. It's not positive or negative. It can be used both ways, but it's pretty straightforward. Empowerment is about giving people skills, confidence, and knowledge to grow while they accomplish these tasks. It's really a value added concept. So as a leader, when you're empowering people, you're giving them more not just asking them to simply do something. In this short module, we're gonna talk about five different ways that you can empower people as a leader. And these are really wrapped up as different roles that you take on, different leadership roles that you can take on to empower folks. So those are to be an enabler, discoverer, encourager, smoother, and illustrator. We'll explain more about what each of them mean, but as we think about these, make sure you picture your own involvement and the, own, your, the groups that you are a part of. In the discoverer role, this kind of leader is continually looking for new opportunities or ways to accomplish the group's mission. It's really helpful if you can be visionary, forward thinking, and also flexible to change as you discover new ways to do something and also recommend someone else for tasks that you might typically take. Some examples of how this could work in your roles. If you always are the one who places the food order for an event, 
ask a member to do it so that they get to learn how to do that and might come up with a new way or a new thing that they want to do. You can also rotate who leads your meetings or even manages the Zoom call set up for them. So someone else could think of a different way that they want to do something or a different format they want to use. In the illustrator role, this kind of leader is often reminding members about the goals, values, and missions of your group. They need to set and make sure they communicate or illustrate a path towards accomplishing those goals and really work to inspire commitment to those goals from members without demanding it. Some examples of how to do this. Show excitement about the goals. If you're excited about those values and goals for your organization, other people will be too. Send periodic reminders or updates about the goals and your progress towards them. And when you encounter an issue or even have a new opportunity in front of you, refer back to your mission to help guide your solution. This way, members are seeing that as a continual reminder of where their guideposts are. In the encourager role, a leader doing this is supportive and reassuring, particularly if someone's new or nervous. They also make sure to celebrate and recognize successes of members. And it's about taking time to believe in your members and take an interest in their achievements, maybe both inside and outside of the, your organization. And this doesn't mean that as a leader, you ignore failures that happen, but you acknowledge them and encourage people to continue to make improvements and grow. Some examples of how this might work at a meeting for you. Talk about the tasks each member completed in the past week and celebrate those a little bit. Um, you can even use things like Trello to track those online so people aren't just reporting out at the meeting. And even things as simple as affirming to someone that you trust them to accomplish a task and then acting like you do, making sure that you're following up on that in your actions, not just your words. And then in the enabler role, this person offers a helping hand to really boost chances of success and think about it as someone who's working as a coach or a team builder for your organization. Some examples of how this might play out. If you're asking a member to make a phone call for the first time, offer to be on the call with them, but let them do the talking. Prepare them for what they need to do, but let them be the one in charge of talking. And only jump in if something really important was missed. And even afterwards, send a quick text to sort of affirm what they did right in that phone call. Or if you have a new member who needs to go to business and finance to drop off an invoice or process something, go with them so they feel comfortable navigating a new space and people, but let them learn how to do it. And then finally in the smoother role, this person works to facilitate those accomplishments to the best extent possible. Thinking about literally smoothing the way for members and removing some obstacles for them. In this role, it's about serving as a resource for people, but not about doing it for them, right? We don't want to micromanage. We want to let them do it. And also provide some information so that they can actually complete a task instead of just sending them off to do it without any guidelines. Some examples of this include if you ask members to make a sign up list for tabling, provide them a template for how you've done that before and maybe steps for how you ask people to sign up. They could choose to do it differently, but you want to provide them some guidelines. If you need to add a member to your Duke Groups page and have them start to fill out some forms or set up an event in there, screen share to show them how to do that and where certain pages are so they have a better understanding. So let's consider a little more application of this. Think about a time when you did not feel empowered at all. This might have been in a class project with someone, in a group project, um, maybe even in your friend group in the way that things have worked out. What actions, behaviors, or other factors on the part of a leader in that situation led to that feeling? Be really specific with yourself. Thinking about those things, which type of empowerment role might have helped you feel more empowered in that situation? Did someone need to provide you a little more context and be a smoother to help you understand what you were walking into? 
hopefully this helps you consider ways that you might apply this in your own work. Um, thank you so much for spending a quick few minutes learning about this today. If we forgot something, if you want to learn more about it, if you have other thoughts, please feel free to email us at leadership at duke.edu. Thanks.